experience. This is the day that the Lord has made us all be glad and rejoice in it. If we all to please stand all together all over this good. Let's put our hands together and give God a great clap of praise. Baptist Church family and to Pastor Beckton, uh, we give all glory and honor for this evening for bringing us together one more time to talk about the armor of God. Because we look around what's happening in this world today, there's an armor that needs to be put on. Because the, the world and our communities and our churches are under attack. It's time, it's time for us to fall down on our knees and begin to pray and call out to God. Yes. It's just that time of the year, it's just that time. So if we will, we're just not going to prolong this any longer. Uh, it's a place for a song here, but uh, if we could, uh, if anyone has a song in their heart uh, that they would like to sing uh, to lead us as a congregation to sing this evening? If anyone has a song? So I'm used to music. He's a little what a mighty God we serve. Be able to withstand in the evil day and have it done all 
to stand. Stand that what having your loins girt with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray it always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watch it there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I read Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through the 18th verse. May the Lord have a blessing to the Lord and bless you.
Right. And once again, welcome. And for anyone who would like to know, the restrooms are just right outside the door to the left for your benefit. And if you need anything, we have an usher on the floor, so um, please uh, feel free to use her. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, yes. 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 It's always good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. mighty God. Amen. Yes. Because yes. without him, we'll not be here today. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, sir. Well, he deserves the honor and the praise today. Yes. Yes. Right. He deserves everything today. Yes. Because yes. without him, he would not be. Amen. Yes. Yes. But I do feel welcome when we go up on the ground and I just thank God for the invitation that we got today to be able to come out and help you all celebrate the honor of God. Amen. Amen. We do need to be suited up. We need to be, we need to have it all on when we go out. Yeah. Into, into the video. So without it, the devil would sneak up on us. Yeah. Amen. 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 We've had our walk and we've had our response. <coughs> now it's the time for the priest's word. Amen. Now it's time for the priest's word. Amen. 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 And, uh, and I'm also instructed to let you know until the, until the preacher is here this afternoon that each of you have seven to twelve minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Seven to ten minutes for your work. Seven to ten minutes for your work. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's do this. So we all could please stand to our feet. And with your blessed right hand, if you would, come toward this, this poor pit, please. See, I'm here. I'm here. To hear the word. To hear the word. I'm here. I'm here. To receive the word. To receive the word. Preach. Preach. Preachers. Preach. 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 Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to start off this, uh, this awesome arm of God with uh, two uh, ministers here. Uh, first, uh, uh, Lawrence Gurdon of Truth by Minister Herman Moore from Chestnut Grove Baptist Church, followed by the Breastplate of Righteousness by Minister Mark Wright from Love Fellowship Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Let's put our hands together for Minister Herman Moore. Good afternoon, church. First giving honor to my God, who is first in my life. I thank him for blessing me to be here today. I thank uh, Pastor Quintus Beckman for this opportunity. And I'd like to thank my pastor, Norma, Brother Norma Cooper, for being here. Yeah. And all the other pastors of, on the pulpit. Yeah. And I'd like to acknowledge my wife, who's also here with me. Amen. Amen. My assignment is to start out here with Lawrence, Bear About the Truth. <clears throat> now, when we say our Lawrence, we're talking about the lower part of our bodies from our waist down to probably about right below our, uh, right above our knees. And in the ancient days, the, the ancient soldiers, they would put their belt on, the girt around their waist. And that's, this, would, this would carry their sword or whatever uh, weapons of choice they had for battle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in, in the spiritual sense, mm -hmm. Lawrence girt about with truth would be a belt which we will put on will be God's, the truth of God's word, which is the truth. Yes, yes, yes. Knowledge or the truth of the scripture. Yes, yes. Okay, now, in 1 Kings 22 and 34, we find that an arrow found its way through Ahab, um, which resulted in his death. And in 1 Samuel, we found out two things about armor. First, the armor that Saul gave to David didn't fit. And then Goliath's armor was no match for David's stone. Amen. Which might lead us to, to say, why put on armor? Amen. Well, the battle that we have to fight does not call for imperfect, faulty armor 
for physical battle, such as that of Ahab, Saul, or Goliath, but for the perfect spiritual armor of God's word, which is true, and the knowledge and the truth of, of Scripture. Amen. So I stand before you to tell you about having your learn loins girt about with truth in our message, the whole arm of God. Now to have your loins girt about with truth is what all the other pieces of spiritual armor are built or based on. Yes. And it, it is the word of God. And when to say dirt, it means to have it camp all about you yes. at all times. We should carry the word of God in our hearts at all times. Yes. And it means having an unchanging relationship with God. And it allow and to a, to always be prepared with God's word in our heart. Mm -hmm. So if asked the question, why do you have faith? Or why do you have hope? We can give them an answer if we got the word of God in us and if we trust in God. Amen. By abiding in God's truth and the truth of God's word, we can stay free from the enemy's lies and deceitful doings. We should always be, we should be aware of our surroundings and always be on the lookout. Always be on the lookout for the enemy. Amen. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Yeah. However, through faith and obedience to God's word, which is true, mm -hmm. we can defeat the devil. Mm -hmm. well, say that. If you read Matthew 4, 1 through 11, you'll see where the devil tried to tempt Jesus with lies and half truths many times. Mm -hmm. yes. But when faced with the perfect truth of the scripture, the devil had to flee every time. Yeah. 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 Now being good, Christians being girded about with truth, this upsets the evil spirits, which in, which in turn brings on spiritual war, warfare against the church, brings on spiritual warfare between us, the church, between demons, fallen angels, and the devil himself. Yeah. So we have to remember to pray without ceasing, because the devil will attack again and again. To have your loins girded about with truth is to be of integrity, honesty, Genuine and sincere before God and others. Matthew 5 and 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works yeah. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. To have our loins girt about with truth, we must study to show ourselves approval of God. Yeah. Yeah. And be studying and be steadfast and unmovable in His Word. All right, say that. Church, I stand before you to let you know that if we don't keep our loins girt about with truth, we are in danger of being bound and confined by the evil, by the enemy's evil doings and disciple ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to continue to call on the name of Jesus and yeah. continue to pray. Yeah, yeah. And we have to continue to believe and know that to believe is to have trust and faith in God. John 8, 31 and 32 said, Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. God's word for God's Breastplate of righteousness. What good is a breastplate? And more importantly, 
What does it have to do with righteousness? Well, let's find out. The second piece of the armor Paul mentions in uh, 614 is the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I want to share something with you right here. It says, a lesson from ancient Israel provides an ironic example of just how important armor can be. Perhaps you may recall the cowardly and capricious life of King Ahab, mm -hmm. which he mentioned before. But how did this evil king's life come to an end? This selfish leader who allowed a man to be killed just so he could have his vineyard, 1 mm -hmm. Kings 21. Mm -hmm. This king of Israel, who did evil in the sights of the Lord more than all who were before him, 1 Kings 6, 16 and 30. Mm -hmm. God had prophesied that Ahab would die in battle in 1 Kings 22. So Ahab decided to disguise himself. Why would you want to think you can hide from God? <laughs> Why his eye like King Jehoshaphat of Judah wore his own kingly robes. Mm -hmm. Their enemies had ordered their captains, fight all Fight with ones small or great. Yes. Don't fight with ones small or great, but only the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, it is surely the king of Israel. Yes. So they turned to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. When the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from the him. Yes. But a certain man drew his bow and unknowingly struck the king between the scale arm and the breastplate. Yes, yes. And even he died, the blood from the wound had flowed into the body of the chariot. Mm -hmm. It is perhaps poetic justice that this righteous, mm -hmm. this unrighteous king lost his life mm -hmm. due to an opening in his arm. Well, it may have been God's justice for him, right. but we have to keep our arm prepared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have to keep our, every soldier after every battle yeah, yeah. goes back and assesses his arm uh -huh. mm -hmm. and makes sure that it is right and ready. Yeah. For the next battle. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Putting on righteousness, facing hordes of Satan, you brace yourself and pray. The host of your enemies shares a collective malicious grand waiting for the command to do their worst. The battle cry sounds, they begin to charge. You tighten your grip on your sword, raise your shield, weapons begin swinging, the unrivaled fury, you do your best to parry an onslaught. Yeah. There are too many weapons to block. Eventually, you watch one of your opponents' sword. Begins making a clean art that continues right past your shield, your shield and towards your chest. You brace yourself, preparing for the worst, expecting your quick demise, watching the weapon move ever closer to you as time slowly slows to a mad crawl. Waiting, waiting, then playing the reverberating noise of the sword strikes your breastplate with a uh, pierces the air. Shaking your head in disbelief, you look down to find that the blood spirit of righteousness stop the dead and blow in his tracks. Deliver by righteousness and with renewed vigor, we plunge back into the fight. Mm. So we have to keep our armor yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 In our lives, we have had many claims. Mm -hmm. We have had many goals yeah. to bounce off our breastplate of righteousness. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When we almost was hit by a car in our uh -huh. finances, in our uh -huh. life, and in our marriage, if the breastplate of righteousness is snugly set and we wrap ourselves all the darts. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. That's all. What's the purpose of a breastplate? The breastplate was a certain part of the Roman's armor. It provided protection for the torso, which contains vital organs like the heart, lungs, and so on. Mm -hmm. Without a breastplate, a soldier would be asking for death. As, as any attack could constantly become fatal, mm -hmm. could instantly become fatal. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a sturdy black breastplate, mm -hmm. the very same attack becomes ineffective and useless. As blows glance off our armor. So we have to continue to stay wrapped in that righteous armor. Why is, why is righteousness associated with the breastplate of armor? Proverbs 11 4 says, Riches do not profit in the day of battle, but righteousness yes. right. delivers from death. Mm -hmm. And we will be delivered from death yes. as long as we have that breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. but without righteousness, which is the key, mm -hmm. we leave ourselves open to almost certain death. With righteousness, just as with the breastplate, the otherwise faithful attacks of our enemies are put. God has given us this for our protection. Yes. He has given us this for the battle that we fight, the spiritual battle. Yes. And let us not become complacent with the armor that God has given us and ask Satan, hey, come up, push me in the chest. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. It is given to us to protect and to go into battle. Not to talk Satan. Mm -hmm. What is righteousness? I like that. Psalms 119 and 172 says, My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. 1 John 3, 4 says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. 
You have to do what? A breastplate of righteousness, but have a sinful life. Mm-hmm. It won't work. All right. It won't fit. All right. <coughs> to be righteous is to do what is right in God's eyes. God's commandments are righteous. In contrast, lawlessness is sin, and sin is the opposite of righteousness. Mm-hmm. So to be righteous is to obey God's law. Yes. What separates us from God? Causing him to causing him to withhold his protection. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short, that he cannot save, nor his ears heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities, our iniquities, have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden, and you have, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So as we walk into sin, as we, if we walk into sin, we may well not have a because we have the protection. God will not hear us. Iniquities of sin are actions that, and thoughts that go against God's law, since they are in conflict with God's way of living and are harmful to ourselves and others. Our perfect and just God will not associate with us if we go down the path of sin and evil. We cut ourselves off from God's protection. So without God's protection, we don't have the breastplate of righteousness. Now, whose righteousness should we be wearing? Isaiah 64 and 6 says, But we are all like unclean things, and all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. Yes. We fade as it leaves, and our iniquities, like the wind, are not us away. So we can't save ourselves on the righteousness that we have. Amen. We'll be just like the Pharisees. Uh-huh. That's right. And some of the ways that I have lived my life before coming to God mm-hmm. and thought I was right. Mm-hmm. Nah. Oh, my you know, me and my wife have a saying, it's just something about burning forever. It just don't set me up. Mm-hmm. It is God by hand mm-hmm. and not ours, which must serve as our breastplate and defense against Satan. Mm-hmm. Now, how to get righteousness? Abraham's faith, which was shown by his doing what God had said it was accounted to him as righteousness. Okay? Now, how do we wear our breastplate of righteousness? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand. Isaiah 59 and 17, Redeemer of Zion, and when you get a chance, read it for yourself. But it talks about how God himself dressed himself. <laughs> And the whole armor of God, just as he has given the armor of God to us. He dresses up to do battle. Okay? And the last point, praise God, once we have put on the breastplate of righteousness, we must be sure not to remove. Ezekiel 33 and 13 shows that wearing righteousness is not a one-time event. Rather, it requires a lifetime. So we can't just put on the whole armor of God and just walk off the beat. Uh-huh. We have to mm-hmm. constantly work on our righteousness. Yes. We have to constantly stay in the will of God because Satan is constantly bombarding us with all kinds of arrows yes. and darts trying to tear our, tear our life, our family, our house, finances down. Um, one thing I would like to share, share with you right quickly. I'm talking to the other ministers on the inside before we come out. I lost a friend. Yes to a gunshot. And I come in one day and my mom was sitting reading the newspaper. And she said, yeah. She said, that was him. And when I looked over her shoulder, my body kind of chilled and hurt. I see where one of my friends had been shot. And the study of it was alcohol, misuse of a firearm, and they had a bulletproof bag. And was playing with it. And somehow or another, he had it on backwards, but before he could get it on, he fired the gun and killed it. Christian friends, let us use the armor of God as it is prepared for us by God. Amen. It's not to tempt Satan, but it is to be used for our defenses and our spiritual walk with Christ. Thank you for your time. Amen. Two awesome words. Yes. Truth. It's an integrity and honesty. God's word should be all around us at all times. 
and the rest of the righteous. We ought to obey God's law. Without God's presence, we are unprotected. That is just plain and simple. Uh, so let's give these two uh, men of God another hand. Now we have here a selection of songs for the all the offertory prayer. Um, so real quick, if you would, um, go back in time for a minute. If you all, I know a lot of you all know this song. Uh, so just join right in. Tell me what are they doing up in heaven today? Live by, try to live by each day. 
Whenever I come into the house of the Lord, I want to give God all I got. Amen. I don't want nobody else crying out for me. I'm going to cry and shout for myself. I have not been for the goodness of Jesus all the time. None of us wouldn't be here yet. So the question is, and always is, when Jesus was on that cross and said, forgive them, what they do not know what they do. And so the question is now, is he still saying, forgive us? Because we come to church and we don't do anything. Because <laughs> we had not been for him on that cross and shed his blood. It's time to get up. What folks say, time is winding up. Uh, move on now uh, with the offering. Uh, we'll pass the picnic as come to do the offering. And Follow the offertory prayer by our reverend next to us. So it's time for everybody to take part. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give God a round of applause. Amen. Truly, our, my heart has been fed to these soldiers this morning, this evening. And we thank God for each and every one of them. It's offering time. And we put this program on for fundraising for our church, and we, we have to um, inquire these lovely preachers, these awesome preachers, and we, we need you guys to help us out in this offering. Amen. If you can, do what the Lord will lead you to do. But me, I'm going to give $10. And if you could give $5, $10 or more, that would be wonderful. But I'm going to give $10 plus. And I'm going to ask you guys to come in and follow along with us. Give. Help us out. Amen. This is a fundraiser. Help us out. Do what the Lord, do your best. Do what the Lord has um, blessed you. Give us a percentage. Amen. 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 We're going to need some singers in there, too. I see some singers in here that are going to need to come and help us and sing and so we're going to ask the ushers to come forth as you guys begin to get a song in your heart and think about the song you want to sing.
the motor running now, it's time for the second part. But before I do, uh, I was asked to let Sister Teresa know on the next election uh, to come back again and give us another selection. You were, you were volunteering. <laughs> so, <laughs> you you volunteer. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, get ready for two more uh, preachers to come and to give us another awesome word. Uh, uh, the Gospel of Peace by Reverend Victor Stephen from True Faith Fellowship Baptist Church, uh, followed by the Shield of Faith by Reverend Anita Docher. From Lakeview Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for our church. Praise the Lord, Sims. Praise the Lord. Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. Yes. And I give honor to God who's the head of my life. Yes. And without him, I would be nothing. Amen. Amen. And I just like to thank Pastor Beckham for allowing me to be here. Pastor Cooper, who paved the road for so many. Amen. And I'd like to thank True Faith for coming and joining with us. Amen. And Reverend Walker, who's always trying to be supportive, and we're trying to be supportive of each other. And I just thank God for her. Amen. And also, I'd like to thank my wife, who's always by my side, and I can stay behind me after she's always beside me. Just thank God again for this opportunity. And when me and Pastor Beck was texting back and forth, and I was asking him, How do you want me to do this? And he said, Let the Spirit lead you. Amen. So I have the opportunity to talk about peace. And as I looked at Ephesians 6, verse 15, it says, For shoes put on the peace that come from the good news, mm -hmm. so that you will be fully prepared. Uh, and then I said, if I had to use for a topic for this day, I would use Jesus will give you peace like no other. Uh, after you put on the armor of God and prepare for battle, you will need to stand on solid foundation mm -hmm. uh, before moving into battle. Uh, when the Roman soldiers prepared for battle, they had a sword in their hand. Mm -hmm. They carried a shield. Mm -hmm. They had a helmet mm -hmm. and breastplate. Yes. Uh, but they would not move before putting shoes on their feet. <coughs> yes, yes. Uh, I know somebody probably said, what do shoes have to do with going into battle? <laughs> Uh, if anybody was in the arm force, they would tell you that a as soldier could run into real trouble uh, in the heat of battle. Uh, he's going to encounter some debris. Uh, it may not be nothing more than twigs and small rocks, uh, but to a barefoot soldier, that can cause some serious pain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and on the last thing that you want to deal with in the middle of a fight is worried about where you step. Mm -hmm. uh, shoes allow you to step freely <coughs> without fear while we turn our full attention to the battle at hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but saints, as you prepare to move forward, don't be afraid because God said, peace, I leave with you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in my peace, I give to you. Yeah. Uh, I come to let the saints know there will be some trials and tribulations. Come on, man. Um, there will be some storms in your life. Amen. But while you're trying to travel, mm -hmm. you have to continue to move on. Mm -hmm. Because somebody needs to know the good news of peace. Yeah. Yeah. And as I begin to look at this a little closer, I begin to look at this word peace. Yeah. Yeah. And I say peace like no love. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to look at how Isaiah said it. He called the gospel peace a wonderful counselor. Mm -hmm. He said he's a mighty God, everlasting Father, mm -hmm. Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, we call him Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the same Jesus that was on the ship. Uh, he was on the ship sleep while the disciples were up top. Mm -hmm. But they tell me that a storm began to move. Mm 
Uh-huh. And they tell me that they begin to wake up Jesus. Uh-huh. And Jesus came up and said one word. Uh-huh. He said peace. Uh-huh. And when he said peace, everything stopped. That's right. yeah. 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 Everything stopped moving. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. And when I began to look at why things stopped moving, uh-huh. I looked at it and said, Jesus said, somebody's calling me. Uh-huh. And Jesus said, let me go on the other side. Uh-huh. And when he got over there, uh-huh. he found that there was a man uh-huh. that had legions uh-huh. yes. that he needed his help. Come on, uh-huh. Oh, somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And when he got there, uh-huh. and then as he healed and delivered this man, uh-huh. he began to tell him something. He said, I got some armor for you. He said, I want you to put on this armor. He said, I got a helmet for you. He said, I want you to put this helmet on your head. He said, I freed your mind from the end. See, God is a mind regulator. And then he said, I want you to take the breastplate and place it around your heart. Uh-huh. Because I, my, your heart belongs to me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, I don't believe in sharing with nobody. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I am a jealous God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then after he dressed him up, uh-huh. Uh-huh. he gave him a pair of shoes. Uh-huh. And he put them on his feet. Uh-huh. And he said that you need to go tell somebody uh-huh. about the good news of peace. Uh-huh. You need to let him know that the gospel of peace uh-huh. has came by. Huh, and touched your body. Huh. And do you remember huh, when Jesus brought peace to your house? Uh-huh. Do you remember when you was up in the middle of the night? Oh, huh, you didn't know how to handle a situation. Yeah. Huh. But somebody said in the morning, huh, between morning and night, yeah. huh, something happened. Huh, and peace. Huh. I said peace yeah. huh, moved on in that house. Huh. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. Huh. Well, as I go to my seat, uh, I like to say there's peace. Uh, I said there's peace uh, that somebody needs to know about. Uh, there's peace uh, that there's a story that you need to tell about. Uh, there's peace. Uh, there's peace uh, in the church. Uh, somebody ought to know what I'm talking about now. Uh, peace uh, when things are going on. Uh, and things are unraveled. Uh-huh. But there will be peace uh-huh. in the middle. Uh-huh. Somebody said, uh-huh. I don't know what to do. Uh-huh. But I tell you, uh-huh. call on peace. Uh-huh. I said peace. Uh-huh. He will take care of you. Uh-huh. This armor of God that we're talking about is an awesome armor to be able to be worn at all times. I stand here today to give honor to my God first. Then I thank Pastor Beckham and First Lady for giving me the opportunity to speak. I give my moderator, Reverend Cooper, and I am privileged to speak before him. But most of all, my pastor, Ronald Walden Jr., and my First Lady, Kimberly Walden of Lakeview Missionary Baptist Church. And I always have somebody got my back. And that's Trustee Pearl Bullock. She's always helping me with the things that needed to be done because she knows that I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. And sometimes you're going to need a little help when you're going to do those things. Today I'm going to talk on the shield of faith. Ephesians 6 16 says, Take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flowering arrows of the evil one. And when I looked at that and I thought about a shield, Uh that's something to cover you up. And then I thought about the song that one of our youth choir sings sometimes, and it goes like this He's all over me, and He's keeping me alive. He's all over me. And he's keeping me alive. And that's what a shield does. It protects you from time to time. The fourth piece of armor is God. He is that shield of faith. Of who? 
God. That is our faith. Because if you don't have God in your life, you have absolutely nothing at all. As we look at the Roman shield, it was large, covering the water completely over. It provided a blanket of protection. And you know at times you hear people say that the God has built his hedge around you. That's the protection that we're living in today. The shield of faith is not a real physical shield. It is a faith that acts like a shield. And that's something that we got to do. That's something that we got to believe in. Because just having a shield will not do any good. Just an ordinary shield. What is faith? Faith is an assurance of all things Uh hoped for. Uh I said all things. The conviction of things not seen. Because we need to realize that we can't see and touch everything. Uh Some things we got to go on faith because God said it so. Then believing in God's promises, he will do what he said. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see those promises materializing yet. You don't see God, but you know he's here. You don't see Jesus, but you know he's here. And by all means, you don't see Satan, and he's truly here. So you see, we got to put on that shield of faith. In the book of Hebrews, they talk about faith. The men and women, the things that they've done. So if our faith is lacking just a little bit, we have something to go back to. We have something that will instruct us in what we need to do and how we need to do it. Uh Do not wait for a physical confirmation to prove that something has happened. Nothing may happen on the surface. Might not see it. But a great spiritual process has been set in motion. The moment we utter God, but God, but God, he can do anything but faith, but God. But that is the walk that we got to walk in, is in faith, believing, trusting. Now, do you really walk by faith and not by sight? Do you have to see everything to believe it? Do you have to touch everything to believe it? Or is God's word good enough? It is time for us to demonstrate true faith. We all can say we walk by faith and not by sight. And then when something comes up in our life that we don't have no control over, where does our faith go? Is our faith still bad in us? Knowing that God can do anything, anything, because he's all knowing, all doing. This shield defends our whole body, but also our arm. He's all over me. And he is keeping me alive. Oh, this shield affects the errors of assault, uh-huh. fears, doubts, and struggles. Yeah. It keeps the dark from head, chest, waist, arms, legs. To quench means to put out, get rid of it. All the fiery darts. Not some, but all. Uh-huh. Because God can do all things. Uh-huh. All things if you give him an opportunity to do it. Uh-huh. A shield of faith, a protected defense shield from God. That's a gift. That's a weapon that God gave us to fight this battle with. We as Christians must learn how to use it effectively as possible to receive the benefits. There's no need in having something that you don't know how to use. Yes, yes, yes. Know that the size of the shield is not that important. Than the understanding the faith of the shield. Oh, yeah. Because it can be a very small thing, as small as a mustard seed, and it still deliver what the Lord says. Oh, yeah. And then it can be as tall as this building. And if you don't know how to do it, it means absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah. There's just something standing in your way. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's no need in having anything that you can't use. Oh, yeah. Because if you can't use it, then it's no good. Yeah. It would do you no good. Faith is of God, having faith as small as a mustard seed. Now I had to go and get a mustard seed because I wasn't quite sure how small a mustard seed was. And that's what God has given us, just that smallness. That's all he's asking for. And some of us can't even even do that. Faith is one of the greatest gifts, the foundation of all Christians, a doorway to hope in God. Faith 
is a protected barrier between us and Satan. Faith, faith is what the Holy Spirit drops into our hearts. Drops. He brings it right here. Because we all know that God is a spirit. And so is Jesus Christ. And they are not here at this particular time. But they did leave the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And this is something that he drops down in our soul. He's not going to make us take this. This is something we got to ask for. This is something we got to pray for. We got to walk into this thing. Because God is not going to just give us just anything at all times. Sometimes we got to listen to the word no. And sometimes he does say yes. Oh, what a day. He's all over me. I can't speak for you. I can only speak for a leader. What God is to me. My trust. My belief. His word. My walk. My action. And his promise. God don't go back on his word. His word is the same as it was yesterday. As it is today. And if we keep on living. It's going to be tomorrow also. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You have already heard these preachers up here today. So you cannot use the excuse you did not know. That you did not hear it. Because it is said. Faith in God and his word can effect the impossible. Yes. God can do anything. Yes. Absolutely anything. Yes. What you believe frees God to release his power, protection, and blessing. And is needed to fit our situation. Because we as Christians, we have different situations. All of our situations are not the same. I might share one situation that you do, and you might share another that someone else does. But because God is an all-seeing and an all-knowing God, He can do any situation in which we come in contact with. As a Christian, it is made to be worn in all circumstances, taking up the shield of faith. That's not something that you put down and you get up every morning and put it back on. You got to go to bed with it on. You got to rise up with it on. And we know that this world, we got to keep this on. Because our job, our communities, there's always somebody out there that want to steal you away from God. Because, you know, the Satan only wants us. He don't want the ones out there in the world because he already have them. So he got to busily work on us. And that's why we got to keep our shield up at all times. Being able to duck here, stoop down there, stand up whichever way you need to go. But you got to be able to use it. Satan attacks in forms of insults, setbacks, and temptation. You know those things that you did back in the day that you don't want nobody to know? Satan already know about that. So he constantly trying to tempt us to go back to that. We need to exercise our faith. Because faith saves, it justifies, it stabilizes, and it strengthens us. Hebrews 10 and 23rd, I took this from you, Pastor. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. With God perspective, we can see beyond our circumstances and know that ultimate victory is God. So, as I leave you today, I expect you to continue to wear the shield of faith. Amen. Two more awesome words uh, from uh, Reverend Stevens and Reverend Anita Docher. Amen. Says you need to stand on solid foundations right. and tell somebody about the good news. And he said, peace that we need to know. Oh my God. And the shield of faith that things hopeful oh. to believe in his promise. Oh. Even though we don't see it, we still need to believe. That's right. That's right. But then she said, not only talk about faith, but faith needs to be seen in us oh. and through us. Oh. But then she said, faith comes by hearing. Not like this. She said, now, you have heard the word. Ain't no excuses. You got an excuse. You have heard the word. The word's been preached. The word's been talked about. You can't give an excuse. Amen? Amen. Let's put our hands together again for uh, Reverend Stephen.
Now I'm going to be uh, blessed with another song for Sister Teresa. She's come back for us and uh, sing for us again. Amen. 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 Put our hands together for uh, Sister Teresa. Say again, 
Let's give our pastors another hand. It's here. All right. Now we're down to the final three. We have the Helmet of Salvation uh, by Elder Jason Griffith from Temple of Christ Church, followed by the Sword of the Spirit by Minister Jacqueline Dark from uh, New Mount Zion Christian Church, and the Spirit of Prayer uh, by Pastor Harold McGill. Jimmy Wilson. Jimmy Wilson. Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Jimmy Wilson. Mount, Mount, Mount Gilead. Mount Gilead. Durham, North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina. Amen? Amen. 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 So in that order, uh, let's uh, keep our amen warmed up and our hand clap together. Uh, we call them in more. In order, uh, Elder Jason Griffith from Temple of Praise, Mr. Jacqueline Dark from New Mount Zion, Mount Zion Christian Church, and Reverend Jimmy Wilson. Amen? Amen. Let's put our hands together for the last two. And the song of David declare, clap your hands, all you people, and shout out to God with the voice of prayer. Amen. How do you know that the Lord is in this place today? Amen. Amen. We ought to be glad about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to give honor to God today. Amen. And I'm glad there's a clock on the wall because my wife said she was going to be, be looking at me. Amen. To, to shut me down. Amen. So we're going to be obedient to the house. Amen. I would just like to give honor to all these awesome preachers up here, amen. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself thus far. Amen. I would like to give honor to my brother in Christ, the angel of this house, Pastor Lamont Beckton, and his lovely wife, Patricia Beckton. Amen. Give them a hand. Clap them for them. Amen. Will my wife please stand up? Emma Griffith. A guest to come and let from uh, New Bethel Baptist in Roseville. Amen. amen. You surprised me. Amen. <laughs> and praise the Lord. Amen. amen. As, as I was asked to uh, about this assignment on the uh, the helmet of salvation. Amen. You know I have preached out of Ephesians on several occasions and taught out of this this book and this text. But God began to deal with me uh, about the helmet. Amen. amen. <laughs> And he began to speak to me specifically about the helmet. Amen. And he began to give me revelatory knowledge about the helmet in the late night hour. Yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, it kept me up several nights. And you know, we're in the season when the leaves change. Uh -huh. And when the, when, the, when the air starts to change, amen, and the elements start to change outside. Yeah, yeah. And has your mother or your grandmother ever told you, Put something on your head before you go outside. Can I talk up in here? Put something on before you go outside because you know you know you might you might get sick as a dog. Have you heard that before, saints? Amen. So we're in that season, amen, where you need something on your head. And that's the topic of my message. Put something on your head before you go outside. Can I talk up in here? Amen. I feel something up in here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And starting from the uh, book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And it says here, chapter um, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yeah. Alright? Uh -huh. Now, there's all types of helmets, amen? amen. How many ever played football in here? Raise your hand. That's all to play football? <laughs> all right. Amen. I was a football player, amen. So the football helmet could, could perhaps protect you from a concussion, amen. amen. I rode a skateboard. Skateboard could, you know, you fall down, bust your head, hey, skate, helmet on your head. Amen. All types of helmets, amen, that protect you from different types of elements, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. But it's something about the helmet of salvation taking on God's gift to us to be saved. Can I talk up in here? Amen. And you know, God began to tell me a lot of people are taking my salvation, my helmet of salvation, put, taking it, putting it on and taking it off. 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 Y'all don't hear me. Amen. And, and you know, there's, the, the Romans had two types of helmets. 
there, there was a type of helmet that they went into battle with that, that was that was with leather and, and, and different um, things that hung down from it to protect the, the, the warrior's head. And then there was a decorative helmet, amen, that was made of brass and silver and gold trim and all this. That was that was meant to, to be in a parade, amen. Amen, amen. And the Lord began to show me that, you know, a lot of people in the church, amen, choose the helmet that you, that you wear in the parade. All right, come on. You want to parade around and you want to look flashy. Come on, come on somebody. And, and, and you want to play church. Go ahead. I've been there. Amen. You want to play church and you want to wear the fancy hat. You're not ready for battle. Amen. You, you don't want to put on the helmet that when you, when you, when you go into warfare. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, and the Lord keeps saying, why do you keep putting on my helmet of salvation and then taking it off? I died on Calvary's cross. They hung me up and I stayed there. I didn't come down. I stayed there and they stretched me wide. And they whipped me. They scourged me. They talked about me. But, 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 I, but I stayed up there. And I didn't come down. So that I might give you this gift of salvation. Amen. This helmet of salvation for your protection. Amen. For your instruction. Amen. I stayed up there. Long enough so you could receive this gift. Yes, yes. But you keep putting it on and taking it off. Yes. Putting it on and taking it off. Yes. Say it with me. Putting it on and taking it off. Putting it on and taking it off. Putting it on and taking it off. Y'all know I'm right. I can say amen all by myself. That's all right. Amen. I'm going to shout here in a minute. Amen. Ain't no or nothing playing. I feel, I feel something. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to give you three quick P's that, that, uh, that I want to borrow from another message I preached several years ago. That, that go along with the hymn of salvation. Prayer, praise, and preaching. All right? Prayer, praise, and preaching. How many know that prayer is a main spiritual weapon? Well, oh, come on now. Every soldier from the least to the greatest in the armed forces of the world knows these three facts can mean the difference between staying alive and being killed. The first is to know your weapon. The second is to know how to keep your weapon in tip-top condition. And the third is to know how to use your weapon. For the weapons of our warfare are not hard. Come on, man of God. But I mean, mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Come on now. Yes, Amen. For example, as a prayer, as a weapon can be found in Acts 12. While Paul and Barnabas were in Jerusalem, handling over Antioch's uh, donation for the famine relief, Herod investigates a new wave of persecution. Mm -hmm. James, one of the three apostles closest to Jesus, dies. Mm -hmm. But God had other plans for Peter. Yes. Even a maximum security uh, prison presents no problem to God. Verse 5 says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing yeah, yeah. of the church for God for him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's go to praise. Is there a praise in the house? Yeah. Amen. Pra praise calls for God's awesomeness. Somebody is facing a Red Sea experience. Yeah. You got hell behind you and high water in front of you. But once you make it uh, out, you can come out with your hands up, saying, praise you the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise lifts your eyes from the battle to the victory. For Christ is already the victor. Praise lifts our eyes from the circumstances of the Almighty Father, who is the ruler of all. When you need faith, there are two steps to take. Go to God's word and begin praising him. Amen. Praise is a commandment. Come on, saints. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his firmament. Amen. Now I'm going to go to preaching. Amen. I told you I'm going to give you three P's. I believe I'm doing good one time. <laughs> preaching is warfare activity. And when we let go of preaching, we are losing the battle of Satan. So the church must pray that their pastor preaches the word. In season and out of season. Come on now. Preaches it clearly, accurately, and preaches it boldly. Amen. Hebrews 4.12 reads, For the word of God is quick, powerful, 
and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to this uh, dividing asunder and soul of spirit, and is, and is the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be go forth out of the mouth, and it shall run not turn and void unto me, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. How many know God's word will not return here to be void? Amen. Amen. And in my closing, amen, I just want to um, give exhortation to the house, to the, to the ecclesia, amen, and to this man of God. Uh, me and him came up in ministry together. And I am so honored, Lamont, that you invited me. I am so honored. You just don't know. Me and my wife, we love you. We love you, Patricia, dearly. These are good friends of ours. And we are so proud of them. Their accomplishments in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. And what they've done for the body of Christ. The example that they've led over the years. <laughs> Amen. And another thing. Years ago. When I was at New Bethel. And this is well before I uh, accepted my call. I was very fortunate. Um, Lamont's mother. Called me one of her sons. And Patricia's mama. Also called me one of her sons. <laughs> And she used to call me long boy. <laughs> and she used to look at me and say, um, hey, that, that long boy. That, that, um, and Trish said, what are you talking about, mama? You talking about Jason? Yeah, that, 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 that long boy. You know, he's going to preach one day. You know, he's going to preach one day. And this is well before I received my call. So I just thank God that um, I had their mothers. Um, it's my mother in the church. My mother's up in Maryland, amen? Mm -hmm. So I don't get to see her as often, but... Um, I'm glad that I had them as friends and their, their parents as my mothers and, and, and their fathers. Amen. Amen. So we just praise God for this opportunity and we, we just ask that the Lord continue to keep you all and, and bless you and keep on that help. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. I count it a privilege and the honor, amen, right. to come out and speak, amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Beckton and First Lady Beckton for inviting me, amen. I truly honor God today. I honor the um, pastors, elders in the pulpit, and my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. Amen. But how many truly believe? How many really realize that we're in a war? Amen? Yeah, amen. It's not a natural war, but it is a spiritual thing. Amen? amen. For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual witnesses, wickedness in high places. Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I have the privilege of speaking on the sixth piece of the armor. Amen. Paul lets us know that we have to have the full armor of God on, amen, to, to be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy, amen. We all know according to scripture, amen, that the spirit is the word, the army is the spirit of the word of God. Yeah. And a lot of times we use things and we say things so haphazardly, amen, but do we really understand what is really going on, amen. Hallelujah. So the spirit, the word of God, is an offensive and a defensive weapon, amen, that the Roman soldiers use and the warriors. So we have to learn to hide the word in our hearts, amen, root out the sin and strengthen our inner man with God's promises before the enemy attacks, amen. So offensively, we are to use the sword to attack and counterattack an enemy, amen, until he is wounded and killed. Defensively, it helps the soldier deflect, mm -hmm. means to bounce or ricochet, amen. The enemy's blows, amen, and his lies and his doubt. Yes. So the Roman soldiers had two types of swords, amen, and some of y'all Bible scholars may know how to uh, pronounce it, but amen, but I'm going to go on and say what I think it says, amen. Oh, <laughs> but it was a Roma fear. And basically, it was a heavy, long um, sword, amen? amen? And that was kind of hard to fight in the battle, amen? You, got, you can't hold your shield and hold this heavy sword, amen? So they used something called a matira, and that was a short sword, amen? It was easy to maneuver quickly, amen? 
So we understand that the sword was a vital piece in the Roman army, amen, for our armor, amen. So the prime example, when Jesus was attacked by Satan in the wilderness, he spoke the word to him, and the enemy had to flee. He didn't reason with the devil, amen. He responded, it is written. Check the book in Matthew 4, amen. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, amen. A lot of times we use part of the scripture, we say resist. No, you have to be submitted unto God, amen. This word does not work if you're not submitted to the will of God, amen. So Jesus is our model to follow to attack the enemy. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. The enemy's job is to cast doubt on the truth of the word of God. But as believers, we are not only to speak the word, but the word has to become a part of our heart and take root in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to be effective in the kingdom of God, we have to begin to speak the word. Amen. The word is life. Amen. And without the word we are just existing amen but it is time it is time to live yeah. men and women of God yeah. hallelujah hallelujah so many of us as Christians amen we neglect the word of God because we're so busy with our own lives amen we have to get to the point where the word is first priority in our life and it has to take precedence over everything else yeah. God is calling his people to come up higher and allow your mind to be fused with his mind, yeah. to become one with him, not of the world system, amen, some of us are walking double minded, amen we're calling on him and we're talking about him, amen, but our hearts are far from the Lord, amen hallelujah, hallelujah so he is our source and our God, amen so now for us, the sword is a spiritual sword, not a physical sword. Amen. The sword comes from the spirit, but it is the word of God. I leave you with this. The time is now to learn the word of truth. Not what we feel. Amen. Not what we think. And not your opinion. Amen. But what the Lord is saying in his word. Amen. We can't take nothing from it nor add anything. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not about man's philosophy. Amen. But it's about the wisdom of our living God. God is holding us accountable if we don't hearken to his voice and study the word. Amen. We have to show ourselves approved. Amen. We want to talk about the pastor that brings the word. Amen. But you have to realize that you have accountability unto the Lord yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is saying I'll be your God if you'll be my people. Amen. So brothers and my sisters of Christ, he loves us and he wants us to fellowship with him like Adam did in the cool of the day. Amen. So we have to begin to understand that when we come in the house of the Lord, don't take it for granted. It is a privilege. Amen. The come before the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And we have to give all of that honor and do Amen. And he's looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can't take our salvation lightly. Amen. But there was power in the word of God. Amen. And we have to learn to call on the name of Jesus while he may be found. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whatever arises in our life, amen, we have to begin to take the sword to fight the enemy. Amen. I don't care what you think about me because if I'm talking, amen, some of us try to look the part. Amen. But God really knows the intent of your heart. Amen. So we got to be real for Jesus, not real for each other. Amen. Because when he called you, we're going all by ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. I give him honor today. God bless you. And may the kingdom of God be first in your life. Because he is the great I am. The Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. And all power belongs to him in heaven and in earth. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A good friend of mine, Reverend Chris, would say, What a word, what a word, what a word. First of all, we give honor, first of all, to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor to the angel of this house. 
Pastor Beckton, his lovely wife, Patricia. We give honor to all these preachers. Amen. Give these preachers a hand. Amen. Amen. We give honor to my angel. Amen. I heard the preacher say that he dated his wife for a couple of years. I dated mine for a month. And we've been married for <laughs> Amen. She always telling me when I go somewhere not to sing. So I told the preacher, I said, have Teresa sing, therefore I don't have to sing. Amen. Amen. We're not going to hold you, amen. We just praise God that we've enjoyed ourselves just being here. We thank Pastor Beckton, amen. Amen. For allowing us, amen, to stand where Pastor McGill, amen, is supposed to be standing, amen. Amen. The Bible tells us we should always be ready. Amen. 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 So we just bless God. Amen. We're talking about the whole arm of God. Although all these great preachers have talked about the six pieces of the spiritual armor which Paul mentioned, we still have a very important piece that nobody spoke about. How many of you know today that we are in a spiritual warfare? How many of you know that Satan is going throughout the world seeking whom he may kill and destroy? How many of you have heard about the shootings that have happened in Paris? So my brothers and sisters, we are in a spiritual warfare. And although many people think when we think about the whole arm of God in these six pieces, when we think about the weaponry of this whole arm of God, we think about the sword of the spirit. But my brother and sister, there's another weapon that just is powerful. Another weapon that may be more powerful than all six of these weapons together. See, the reason most people don't consider this weapon to be part of the spiritual arm is because Paul didn't mention it as a visible piece of the Romans armor. But I stopped by to tell you today that we got to have prayer. And therefore, my subject today to you, there is a secret weapon. See, you can have on the whole arm of God, but you have to have prayer in your life. See, you can put on the helmet of salvation. You can put on the breastplate of righteousness. You can have your feet shiny with the preparation of the gospel. But I stopped by to tell you that none of these things are going to be any good to you unless you have faith and faith come by the word of God. You gotta have prayer in your life. See, there's a weapon that the Romans they use all kinds of weapons. They use the battering ram. They use the catapult. They had spears. They had bows and arrows. But sometimes they train their horses to use their hooves. See, any military person will tell you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what the warfare that you're in, you always want to outsmart the enemy. So you got to have a secret weapon. And our secret weapon is prayer. See, I want to let you know the enemy, he can counteract any military weaponry. He can counteract your sword. He can counteract your bow. He can counteract your, your helmet. They have a villain pure piercing bullets now. So he can get through your prayer set, your breastplate of righteousness. But I stop by to tell you that if an enemy, he can't do nothing with the power of prayer. See, Paul, if I believe that Paul was here today, Paul would tell us that you got to have a prayer life. See, so many saints of God, we only call on God when things are going bad in our life. I'm reminded when 9-11 folk were praying for 
for everyone. And I stopped by to tell you, since the shooting in Paris, folk have been praying. But what about when things are going good? What about when your pockets are full? What about when your health is good? You need to give God the praise. Then we pray. When we pray to God, we are communing with God. We got to be with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. But we, first thing we need to know about the secret weapon yeah, yeah. of prayer yeah. is that it must be perpetual. Okay. Huh? Somebody talk to me. All right. We get this from the two words from verse 18 where it say pray always that we should pray and always and Paul will remind us in 1st Thessalonians that we should pray without ceasing it doesn't matter what we're going through we should take time to go down on bending knees the reason I know prayer is important the Bible tells me when Jesus, y'all know who Jesus is, when he came down out of 42 generations, the Bible tells me that before he went to the cross of Calvary, the Bible said he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible said he went down on his knees. He began to pray. He said, God, if it be thy will, take this bitter cup away from me. But the word of God said he came to himself and said, not my will, but let thy will be done. The Bible said when he was on the cross, he looked up into glory. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. And then the Bible tells me that in his last words, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then my brothers and my sisters, when we think about the secret weapon of prayer, our prayer should be petitionary. What I mean by that, we need to ask God and talk to God about the things that we need. For the word of God says, you have not. Because you ask not. I didn't say you get silly with God now. I didn't say you ask God for a Mercedes Benz when you got a Volkswagen pocketbook. But you need to go to God in prayer and have a patricianary prayer. And I think in another thing, when you talk about the secret weapon, we got to understand that prayer is powerful. You got to have a powerful power. See, folk go to God with these little weak prayers. Go to God and say, if thou would do these things for me, I'll be careful to give your name the praise. What you just said, God, is God, if you don't bless me, I won't praise your name. See, I stopped by to tell you that there is power in prayer. Then my brothers and my sisters, as I get ready to close, we got to have a preservant prayer. See, with this fourth element is a prayer that we got to have that will preserve us. See, sometimes when you're up and down, when your health is good, when you can walk and put one foot in front of the other, when you're feeling all right, you might, you need to set up some extra prayer because there's going to come a time when your health going to go, when you can't go down on your knees and pray, you need to have some in reserve. You need to have some that can preserve it. Because I stopped by to tell you, if you keep on living, trouble going to come in your life. Sickness going to come in your life. You will want to pray, but you won't be able to. So you need to have some preserving prayer. But the last thing I want to say, that not only that, but you got to have a purposeful prayer. What is a purposeful prayer? A prayer that means something. See, too many of us, 
We pray these nonchalant prayers. We pray because that's what we heard somebody else say. But I stopped by to tell you, when you're talking to God, you need to have on your spiritual armor. You need to talk to God like you're talking to somebody important. God is not a plaything. Put on the whole armor of God. All right. No matter what you put on, if you put that helmet on, and you don't pray for protection, guess what? Your enemy can penetrate that helmet. If you put on that breastplate of righteousness, and you don't pray over that breastplate, your enemy gonna penetrate that breastplate. If you gird your lawns, if you don't pray over that belt and with holding your sword, guess what your enemy gonna penetrate that. We need to pray, church. We're in a spiritual warfare. And the only way we can defeat this enemy who don't play fair is through prayer. Because we can't do it alone. We gotta pray to God. Use your secret weapon. Use the weapon tree of prayer. scratching the itchy ears and give them something to make you feel good just for a minute. But give them some, some solid foundation as these preachers have given with us this evening. Uh, and then my sister said, uh, offense is a defense to attack, to defend off the enemy. She said, we need to submit to the word of God so that the word takes root in us. And we need to be accountable ourselves. I don't worry about the person sitting next to us. We need to be accountable for ourselves. Yes, uh, God knows our intent. That's what my mm -hmm. sister said. Uh, and also, my brother said, we're in a spiritual warfare. There you go. And uh, we have a secret weapon. Mm -hmm. right. We just need to use it. That's right. That's right. He said, what good is it to put on the armor mm -hmm. if you're not praying? Right. You just, you just, yeah. you just put something on. So we need to pray. Struggle prayer. Teach our children to pray. Yeah. Right now, because as they go to school daily, uh, they're always under attack. It's something that's always, uh, it's always uh, upon them, but teach your children to pray. Uh, again, uh, Pastor Beckton, I thank you uh, once again to be able to come out and be uh, the worship leader for this service. Uh, Sister Beckton, I love you too. Uh, my mama, I love you too, dear. <laughs> and I, and I, you know, I pray for your son, because I know he gets a little hard sometimes. <laughs> but I love my man. We've been friends for over, wow, 12 years or better. And he 
He's always had a heart of giving. He always had a heart of prayer. Uh, uh, whenever and I know that I need something in prayer, I can always count on uh, Brother Beckton to do that. So, uh, man, I love you, man. I uh, really love you. Uh, again, I say it's time to go. Let's give these preachers another hand. <laughs> Uh, now we have our closing remarks from our Reverend uh, Quintus Beckham, the angel of this house. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Let's give these preachers a round of applause. Now, I'll give you guys a round of applause. I don't take it for granted. I thank God for each and every soul in the building. I thank God for every preacher up here. I thank God for my cousin, who's been my, my, a friend of mine for a long time since we was growing up. Um, he just preached this initial sermon last week. Yeah. You, can, you wouldn't have been able to tell us now if I, I told you. You did an awesome job. Awesome, awesome job. Amen, amen. To my friend uh, who grew up with me in the ministry, and I grew up with him in the ministry, uh, Elder Jason Griffin and his wife, and I was looking at her, trying to get her to sing, and she wouldn't look at me. And I said, <laughs> I, every time I look back there trying to get a little song, we would get back there. It's all right. It's all right. I thank God for uh, um, Elder Griffin, a good friend of mine, and I thank God for Minister Mark. We, we work together with the company. We be on driving truck, going down the road, talking with each other all day, talking about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank God for him, and I thank God for uh, Minister Jacqueline Dahl. I really don't know you. It's my second time see, meeting you, but I know your husband is a good man, and me and him and Mark work together. If I wasn't talking to Mark, I was talking to Pastor Dahl, and I was talking, we're talking, we're talking about the goodness of Jesus, and I thank God for you, and, I, and a, what a wonderful word. Amen. And I thank God for um, Reverend Dosha for um, Lakeview Baptist Church. I thank God for you and the awesome word. Um, me and my mom got together, and that was the first name that came up, Reverend Dosha, because we know that you was going to come with a good, powerful word, and we thank you, and we love you, and we thank God for you. Uh, Reverend Stevens, we thank God for you, a humble man. We thank God for you, a man of God. You stay on the wall because God got good things for you. You stay on the wall with your humble heart, you and your wife. And I love you guys, and I thank God for you. Pastor Jimmy Wilson, I thank you for stepping in as a leader, been pastor for all these years, and you took time out your busy schedule to come and fellowship with us. We thank God for you, and we don't take it for granted. Amen. 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 I thank God for uh, Minister Tony Woods, who's been a friend, like he said, for all these many, many years, but he would not read that book on golf that I gave him. <laughs> I gave it to him for a reason, and he will not read it. But I thank God for him. He's been a good friend of mine, a good spiritual leader, and as a good mind uh, dancer, I thank God for a good preacher. Amen. 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 When, I'm, when me and my wife were on vacation, I, I get with uh, United Christian Missionary Baptist Church, and the first name I tell her, I said, Minister Woods, come in and step in for me when I'm out here. Amen. I thank God for Minister Perry. I, I text him, and he said, uh, hey, come and play when the choir back got on me. I thank God for him and we pray that, that, uh, that your voice and your your, your, your sickness, your cold, whatever you're going through, will, uh, will, will we, pre we plead the blood of Jesus and healing spirit come upon you. And y'all don't get to hear him sing today, but he has an awesome voice. And I thank God for him. Just as quick as I can with this, I thank God for all the pastors. My pastor, Pastor uh, Dog, Pastor Cooper, uh, Lakeview Pastor is here. I think I think Lakeview Pastor, he, he's probably gone. But uh, if any pastor have a word that they want to want to say, we give leeway for you right now for a pastor. Any pastor that have a word they want to say, we give leeway for you right now. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dog, Pastor Cooper, any pastor. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Pastor Cooper, my pastor. Amen. We're going to ask him to get ready to close us out in prayer. Amen. And um, my mother, 
who um now I will say this right quick. Now there's two women on the program. It would have been three, but my mother, I thank God for her, she wanted to have surgery. Lord have mercy. God bless her. God bless her. And we stood right there with her uh doing her surgery. We thank God that she's able to be here. Amen. <laughs> Every soul in the building. I thank God for you. Now it's not that I, uh, I'm the, I'm kind of pastor that, that, that say well women did not. I like to have just as many women in the pulpit as men when we're doing a program like this. Amen. So don't think that I, I'm just biased on God pastors because it's five men and, and two women. No, it's not like that. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. It's all hearts and mind closed. Clear? <laughs> 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 I, I was just thinking about Mr. Woods over here. I know his mind is closed, and I was just thinking about him. I, was, I, I don't feel in that spirit over there. I said, well, I know his mind closed. Oh, his mind clear. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have uh, Pastor Cooper, if he would, come and, and do our closing prayer. We thank God for all the deacons in the house, all the deacons in the house, but my associate minister, uh, Reverend Cruder, my wife. Thank God for every one of you. Deacon Johnson, I beat him up on the golf course yesterday. We thank God for him, everybody. We thank God for you. Amen. 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 We thank God for all of you that are here today and I, my soul is just on fire with the word of God because you have really blessed me and you really touched me today putting on the whole armor of God. We have to be robed and ready for battle because it is a battle out here and it's a battle and you know the word of God has been um, taking a big hit these days. People don't feel like it's necessary to go to church. But I come by to let you know we need to go even more than we used to go because we need to proclaim the gospel. Let the enemy know that we're not going his way, but we're going God's way. Let us stand. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen and ears have heard. And, O oh God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for you've been good to us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord. You've been a bridge over troubled waters. You've been a shelter out of the storm of life. And oh God, we just thank you right now. We thank you individually, and then we thank you collectively. Lord, we just thank you, we love you, and as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hey man, I'm gonna ask the preachers to come down and take pictures together. Take pictures together. Thank God for you.